China uses bribes, opaque agreements, and the strategic use of debt to hold states in Africa captive to Beijing's wishes and demands. The United States and China are two of the world's most powerful nations. Both have massive militaries with bases all over the world. And that includes in Djibouti in the Horn of Africa. The two bases are only 15 minutes apart. And that proximity is proving to be a source of tension. Camp Lemonier is used by the U.S. for its counterterrorism operations in Africa. It claims Chinese soldiers have been trying to infiltrate its base. The charges Beijing categorically denies. But that hasn't stopped the U.S. from threatening to take action. So, with tensions mounting, where does that leave Djibouti, a nation caught between two superpowers? Well, to discuss this, let's bring in our panel. In Juba, we have Akol Nyok Akol Dok. He's a political commentator and an expert on China's One Belt, One Road initiative. And in Beijing is economic and political affairs commentator Einar Tang. And good to have you both on the program. Akol Nyok Dok, is Djibouti caught between China and the United States here? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, yes, I think Djibouti is caught. Um, because you have to realize that um, in 2017, uh, from these payments alone, Djibouti got 5% of its GDP from U.S., France, Japan, and China. And now Djibouti is crossroad because it owes debt to China, and the U.S. now is seeing the importance of the, its base, particularly in Africa. And this goes in line with also the port of uh, Dorle, which uh, John Bolton, that same speech, talked about. And the U.S. has fears that the Chinese are looking to take ownership in that port due to the debt that Djibouti owes to China. Okay, so, Einar, Djibouti seems to be a prisoner of its own geography here. Horn of Africa, crucial strategic place, and the two most powerful countries in the world wanting a piece of it. Is that how you see it? Well, I don't know uh, how I see it. I, I think the, the, you should explore the facts first. Uh, what, what you have here is Djibouti, a very, very small country. Uh, they've managed to attract not only uh, China and the U.S., but five other countries, including many European ones, the British, French, etc. So it, it, what it was is it, originally the, uh, the U.S. came in. They had about, uh, what was it, 80 acres. It's now expanded to 500 acres. The Chinese, uh, they have about 4,000 troops there. The Chinese have about 1,000 troops and about 90 acres. Now, as invariably happens, um, young men who are in the military tend to be a, a bit uh, competitive. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are some hijinks going on. I know that uh, the reports are very clearly that uh, the U.S. is flying helicopters and also jets low over uh, the Chinese camp. And they are responding by uh, shining uh, lasers at the... Uh, at the crewmen and things like that. So uh, these types of things go on. The, the issue here, though, is that you don't want it to kind of spiral out of control. And uh, that's what's important. Is it likely, I know, that the Chinese did try to infiltrate the U.S. base? I, I have no idea. I think it's pure speculation. You have the U.S. saying they did. You have China saying they didn't. Uh, if the U.S. had any sort of proof, I'm sure that they would, uh, they would put it up there. I mean, these perimeters that are, are patrolled, uh, they're on CCTV, they're electrified fences, this type of thing. The, these are not somewhere where you just walk in the park. So uh, if there was some sort of infiltration uh, effect, they, they would have uh, shown some sort of uh, uh, evidence mm -hmm. to that, uh, that duty. Now, earlier you said in your opening that uh, China has many bases around the world. That, that's not true. The U.S. does, about 400. But China, actually, this is, this is their one uh, outside base. It was not created as a military base, but as a resupply station for the work that they've been doing on anti-piracy in Africa. So that was the ostensible mission. Uh, it's not clear exactly if that has changed. Uh, the U.S. side, is, as, as, as you correctly pointed out, is this is a base for counterterrorism. They don't fly airplanes in there anymore because, uh, for some reason, they thought it was unsafe. Mm -hmm. Akol Diok, as we look at all the multiple interests here, from the Chinese side and the American side, as was mentioned by Einar as well, so we have anti-piracy, we have anti-terrorism, we have just the strategic location, the fact that you have the Gulf of Aden, you have Yemen across the water... Somalia, and so on. And then there's also financial, right? There's Chinese investment in the country. Which is the highest priority for the government of Djibouti right now? 
I think the highest priority for the government of Djibouti is its financial obligations to China. Um, the government of Djibouti uh, has invested China, and the Chinese have invested heavily in the Djibouti. And that should be a priority for them. And I think this is a, the, the United States is trying to show that it's, it's cognizant of what's happening in Africa. Uh, the policy, as John Bolton said, is to choose uh, China or U.S. U.S. realizes uh, the, the, the potential of China Africa. The Chinese are very involved in Africa. As you see, the, the China summit in, that they did in Beijing, where President Xi committed almost $60 billion U.S. dollars to Africa, to Africa. And now the U.S. might be worried about the, the Dorothe uh, container terminal. And uh, you see the, the U.S. commander, the AFRICOM commander, uh, Gen, uh, General Thomas Rolfes, uh, spoke to the Congress about the armed services, about this issue. So I think the priority should be Djibouti should be financial commitment. In addition, Djibouti should consider that it's at a strategic place and it might have to choose sides. Right. And Akko, when it comes to financial commitment, there's a free trade zone. This was an agreement between the government of Djibouti and the Chinese. Is it for the benefit of Djibouti's government and its people, or is it going to find itself in a what people call debt trap? Well, the issue with debt trap diplomacy is twofold. One is you can say there is irresponsibility of governments who commit themselves to these debt that they can't pay, but also the Chinese strategically realizing that they can't pay. It's threatening because uh, the Chinese could, to recoup its debt and its money invested, uh, seek to take part ownership or control of the Dorle container terminal. Which is, uh, which, is, which is the fear that the United States has. Aina Tangan, address the issue of debt trap well, diplomacy. Well, uh, quite frankly, China has been very interested in the economic development of Africa. And as you said, it's a very strategic area. They, they actually operate two ports in Djibouti, and they're looking like it, they'll be operating a third. Now, the difference between the approaches between the U.S. and China is that the U.S. has been very active militarily. They've uh, used it in the past to confront uh, those they see as enemies, Af I mean, Russia, for ex example, in the past. Um, but China has been uh, pu putting money into Africa. They believe that there's uh, strong trade there. Obviously, resources are very important to China. It's very low on uh, the index of per-person uh, resources. And, uh, I mean, literally down around 100. So they, they need this. This is something they do. They're the largest importer of oil. Um, the U.S. is not. So the real question, I mean, for many in, in China is why does the U.S. have, you know, 400 bases around the world in such a large concentration in this particular area? Uh, and then start complaining that the Chinese are expanding when in actuality uh, they have a very, very minuscule footprint. Okay, Einar and Akol, I've got to leave it at that. But I thank you both for joining us on the Newsmakers.